Uh, the development for Gun was a challenging and difficult but fun process. Uh, we had been doing here uh, a lot of Tony Hawk games here at Neversoft and uh, now wanted to start something new as well. And uh, you know, we had this chance to do a new IP um, and thought, well, let's try a Western because no one had done uh, a Western at that point uh, that we decided to do it. Over the course of making the project, it seemed like maybe our timing was right because uh, a lot of uh, new Western material has actually come forth in the last couple of years, uh, say in movies and television. You know, with Deadwood on HBO, that's like a completely well-received new show. It's kind of a, a little bit of an edgier bent on the Western. Um, and that's actually the same kind of direction that we decided to take the game. Uh, we wanted to make something that would appeal to mature audiences, um, not only because it, it really showed the down and dirty grittiness and brutality that truly was the Old West, but we also wanted to kind of write a more sophisticated storyline, uh, which I think we've uh, accomplished. When we started working on Gun and we knew it was going to be a Western adventure game, uh, action adventure game, um, we knew that it wanted to be, we wanted it to be an epic story. Uh, a huge uh, telling of a story and also give the player um, a feeling of what the Old West really was about. And uh, to do that, um, and to tell a good story in a game, you need to really draw the player in because most players are going to you know, skip past cutscenes, which are little movies that the um, player will see as he completes different portions of the game. And that meant we needed to make sure that the, the story was uh, top notch and uh, a star quality story. So um, we uh, scoured um, the, uh, the writers out there, got a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, submissions in and uh, we found Randall, he'd done uh, The Mask of Zorro and he'd done The Doors, um, both of which had a good feel to them. Um, plus his background was just so deep in the, into the Old West that um, once we met with him, started uh, throwing around story ideas, we knew he was the guy um, to work with. And uh, it really paid off at the end because we felt like we'd come up with a story that um, was compelling and interesting and really catered to the gameplay we were trying to get across as well. Uh, this is my first foray into, into game world and, and game construction and, and play and uh, all of that. Um, prior to this, I'd, all my work had been in screenwriting and, and when, you're, when you're constructing a screenplay, you're basically moving on a straight and narrow path from beginning to middle to end. And what's, what's a, a big difference uh, between screenplays and uh, say a, a script for, a, for something like Gun is that it's much more dimensional. You have, you have on, on one level a, a straight narrative plot line that you're driving forward and you drive that forward with what, what are called the cutscenes and the cutscenes are the uh, non-interactive scenes. They're scenes like that, that play in the game like a scene from a movie. There's no interaction going on uh, or player interaction going on. But um, then it fans out in both directions onto side missions and uh, other special things and you, as a player you can get into you know you arrive into town you don't immediately have to go on an, on on a, a task you can go and explore the world some and you can do it at your own pace you can't do that in in a screenplay and in a movie because it's all sh it's you're moving forward it's all being shown there is no interactive uh, side to things so there is, there is less latitude and less dimension in the construction of a screenplay um, uh, than there is in, in a, in a game, gameplay. However, cutscenes, as I learned very early on, have to be extremely short and utilitarian. Uh, Joel took me aside uh, at, at one point and put a controller into my hands and he said, see that button with a little X on it? He said, that's the enemy. You've got to, you've got to uh, imagine that there's a player sitting on that thing with his finger on that button like a, like a, like a gunslinger on his trigger <laughs> at that. He'll pull that trigger at any given moment and move past the cutscene to get onto the next action. So he said the, the cutscenes have to be extremely concise, utilitarian, but at the same time you've got to develop character, they have to be creative and, uh, you know, uh, uh, entertaining. Gun had a lot of uh, new territory for Neversoft to, to break through on, on design and storytelling and, and movies. 
uh, and on the techno technological side was also very, uh, very powerful and, and challenging to get past. Um, we were doing the streaming world that we hadn't done before. And uh, that led to a whole slew of complexities of what gets loaded when, what sound packs get loaded, what geometry gets loaded, what characters get loaded in, um, what mission is currently loaded. And it was um, a nightmare as far as initially trying to figure out how memory was allocated and um, became uh, uh, a bit of a puzzle that we had to figure out. Um, along with that, uh, we also had a new AI system that we had to create. All our characters had to react to the player in all different ways. If the player was on horse, if he was on foot, if he was pointing a weapon at them, if he had just shot them, if he grabbed them and tried to use them, uh, if he had just hit them, if they were scared and wanted to run away, um, if he was just walking through town. Um, all these characters that were in filling out the world of Gun had to react correctly to the player and with each other. And that was a whole new uh, technological advance that we made at Neversoft. And, um, both of those were a huge, two of our biggest challenges to get past. Um, but once we got done with them, they really paid off. Motion capture is the process of capturing motion. I, it sounds stupid, but it's true. Basically, the way it works is we have a special camera system that is attuned to capture the positions of these little markers. So we can put these on whatever we want. So for instance, in the background, we have them all over Chris. And you can see that as he moves, um, this is what we're capturing. It's, it's really just all math. Uh, the camera system knows where all the cameras are in 3D space, so when it sees a little reflective marker out there, it can figure out through trigonometry where that marker is in 3D space, compile it all together, and thanks to the wonderful world of computers, it can do that all very, very fast. So it's actually doing all that math in real time at 120 frames a second on Chris right now. For the game Gun, we use motion capture a little bit for the in-game stuff, but mainly for the cinematics in the game. Uh, what we did is we chose to set up a mocap studio and have all the actors come in, play different parts. We cast all the parts just like you would in a film or theater, and had the actors come in, play the parts, rehearse scenes, and then once we'd rehearsed the scenes and blocked the scenes and, and got the actors doing what we wanted to for the cinematics, we put on the motion capture suits, captured all the data, and then went through the process of cleaning that up, applying it to the characters, and putting it into the cinematics. Well, we have uh, a multi-track digital uh, hard disk recorder, and uh, we have about uh, eight different microphones out there, all feeding this one uh, multi-track recorder. Uh, you know, every perspective, we have uh, about 200 feet away, we have, you know, eight yards, we have ones that are behind cars and uh, in different microphones. And then we take all of those and we uh, mix them together however is uh, needed uh, to create the sound that we need for that weapon. Today we're working with the Colt 1847 Walker, the 50 caliber Hawken rifle, and a scaled down 20 millimeter black powder cannon. Well, fortunately, there are many manufacturers, uh, especially in Italy, that manufacture reproductions of older guns. And most of the, the firearms that we have out here today are those reproductions. Well, we, uh, we are always trying to uh, get original, um, uh, authentic uh, art and original, authentic sound uh, into the game, uh, you know, and uh, it helps create the uh, atmosphere of the game uh, and really puts you in the wild, wild west. Our story is told uh, via nearly 80 uh, in-game cinematics. Uh, they're all fully motion captured. We've got uh, some killer voice talent uh, that we hired in to uh, essentially bring all the characters to life. And Colton White, the main character, played by Thomas Jane of uh, recently of The Punisher fame. Um, Brad Dourif plays the uh, completely out of control and nasty preacher. Uh, Lance Henriksen plays uh, the arch enemy Thomas Magruder. The Western is definitely not coming back. It's never left. My opinion is that there, it's a, in science fiction, it's a morality play, and it's a thinly disguised Western. Westerns are a wonderful form. And that's why I'm doing this. I love, I'll do anything to be in a Western. I think Westerns had had their day, and, and now there's a, a different look, which is to sort of try to make them more accurate and more honest, which is what we're trying to do. Um, but there, there's something universal in them that I think will never disappear, and that's that because there was no law, 
every person brought their own morality with them and imposed their own idea of right and wrong. And uh, that made for, uh, that made for a, a kind of a morality play. I think that video games certainly emulate Hollywood movies and are trying to become more and more like uh, you know, some of the bigger action movies that you see. Uh, and vice versa, I think that a lot of uh, filmmakers are checking out video games and seeing the camera angles and the cutting styles that uh, wind up cross-pollinating themselves in the film. So it's sort of a, you know, it's a, it's a two-handed dance. It's too late. That preacher killed it. Son of a bitch is leading the ambush. Those traitors can't be trusted. You lost it. You get it back. Now, go! I'm on my way, sir. I think video games are moving toward becoming their own movies. I mean, I've seen a movie that could easily be a video game, but in the case of Gun, what I just saw, you know, I've just seen some of it. It's pretty fun. I mean, if I was going to do a Western as an actor, I would play Gun for a while because you could see all of the elements that some director would throw at you, so it's kind of great. The differences between um, doing a game in a studio and, and, and acting uh, in a movie is that um, acting in a movie is much more complicated because you use much more of yourself uh, under much more complicated circumstances. Um, you can hide in a studio. It doesn't matter what you wear or how you look. <laughs> I'm unarmed. You kill me and your soul will be as cursed as mine. You know, you don't have to spend as long in makeup. Uh, you don't have to cut your hair or whittle down your nails before you show up. Uh, I did most of my work barefoot in that little room back there. Um, and uh, it's a lot more casual. The people are real nice and coffee's better. <laughs> Blood will spill no matter where the sun hits the earth until justice is served. The biggest challenge I face doing a voice for a video game is embarrassment at being bad. If I'm good, I'm good. If I'm bad, it's embarrassing. The idea of um, playing a game that I was in uh, is at first terrifying to me because I can't stand the sound of my voice and I hate the way I look. A glorious bounty, my son. Truly, the Lord has blessed you with the talent of a marksman. I do all right, preacher. It uh, was a huge challenge in all ways. We wanted the story to be fantastic. We wanted the cinematics to, to really work well and tell a good story. We wanted the gameplay to be non-repetitive and be really interesting and varied. And uh, we wanted the characters to come alive and really seem uh, uh, true and deep and real. Um, we wanted uh, the environments to come across and really come across as these fantastic, beautiful vistas and badlands and old cities of the West. Um, and to have that all come together at the end and work fluidly um, to give the player this epic uh, story and feeling of the Old West and still be really fun at the same time was just, uh, I, I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. A video game consists of very many disparate parts and all of these parts are always in development uh, at the same time over the course of, as you said, two years. And a lot of times it takes a certain vision to, and, and, and reliance, I think, on, on yourself and your people to know that you can pull this thing off. And then when you see all those disparate parts come together in the end to make the package and you're actually you know, satisfied and excited about that package, you're just like, Damn, can't believe we did it. Son, listen close, because there ain't much time. I've done my best to raise you right. Time to earn our pay. I ain't leaving you, Pa. Huh? 
God damn it, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I ain't your father. I'm going. Oh. Oh. Thomas Magruder, railroad man. He's taking over the territory. Us and the Apaches are the only ones fighting back. Count me in, too. Welcome to the Resistance. If they get the upper hand, I promise you'll put a bullet in my head before they have their fun. Let's do what they don't expect. Attack. God damn, kid. No one is gonna stand in the way of my destiny. You understand? No one! I am cold. Gun is my story. <laughs>